Hi, welcome back. In today's class, we'll be practicing a variety of poses, but we'll be using the wall today. So clear a space, have your mat at the wall. Um, you can have another mat crossways, or otherwise, if you just have one mat, just have one at the wall for now. We can adjust it. And then you'll have a couple of blocks, and later we may use a bolster. So just have those things around you, and uh, we'll get started, OK? Before we get started, if you enjoy this video and find it helpful, please give it a like. And if you're new to my channel, subscribe and don't forget to click the bell so that you are notified when the new videos are uploaded. Now let's get started. All right, so just getting your props. And I'll just start at, to, at the wall in Tadasana. So I'll be here for just a little bit. If you're still gathering your props, don't worry. You can come to the wall. All right, I'm lining my heels up at the wall, my hips up at the wall, and using the wall here to find out how I am aligned or if I'm not. So I want to move my hips to the wall, have my heels at the wall, move my thighs back, and you'll feel there you have a little bit of a, a curve for your lower back, which is natural. But bring your shoulders to the wall and feel how much of your upper back is at the wall. So there's, the yoga is a lot about observing yourself and noticing how you're standing, how you're seated, where you have imbalances, and then going from there. All right, so just standing. We'll take our arms up, Urdhva Hastasana, and bring your thumbs to the wall. So anchor your thumbs, stretch your fingers up, and as you do that, press the heel down. So the inner and outer heel, imagining you had a horseshoe there on your heel, pressing down equally and then through the ball of the foot, lifting up through the arches. And then with that downward movement, lift up through the inner legs, lift up through the side trunk. Drop your shoulders, drop your shoulder blades and reach your arms up. So you're opening through the armpit chest, you're lengthening. If that's difficult for you to do without bending your elbows, take your hands a little bit wider, or you can hold a strap. So holding the strap can create width across the upper back. Okay? So just stay there, observe your breath, and then bring your hands down. Okay, so now we're gonna take our legs wide and you'll use a block, you teach a trikonasana. So we'll use the wall for this to just feel the back body. So feel where you are. Sometimes when we're in space, we're in the middle of the room, we can't really tell if our hips are moving out or what's happening in our legs. So here, this is strong action with the legs. So you're spreading the feet, spreading the toes, standing equally on all four corners. And then, <clears throat> Sometimes when we do this pose, the hips move back. But here we have the wall, so the hips can't move back. So it keeps you in the right alignment so that you're lengthening over this leg. And then you can take your block, bring your hand underneath your shoulders. So you don't want the hand way over here. If we were doing something I wanted you to lengthen more and ask you to do that, you could do that. But here you're just going to bring the palm onto that block. Press the hand down, and here you can feel that the top shoulder is away from the wall. The bottom shoulder is on the wall. So now I'm going to press that bottom shoulder toward the wall, and that will help me to move that shoulder away from the wall and bring this shoulder closer. So I'm turning the whole chest. I'm broadening through the front of the chest, all right, and then come back to your feet, pressing down. Lift up through the, through the legs. And you can feel the back of the head at the wall. So first lengthening the neck, lengthening the back of the head. And now reach the arm up. You can take the arm and slide it up. And bring the hand a little bit away from the wall. Press the bottom hand down. Roll that bottom shoulder back toward the wall. Shoulder blade away from the wall. And then turn and look up. Now, if you have that 
strength, and you can move your, you can keep your head at the wall, move your buttock away from the wall. So you can feel that buttock coming forward toward the front pelvis. If I took my hand back there, there would be a little space there. So bringing more strength to the legs, turn the chest. And then inhale, come up. You're gonna take the block and go to the other side. If you have two blocks, you can put a block on each side. If you have one block, just move your block. Okay, so the alignment is the heel to the arch. Have enough space. Oftentimes we don't straighten our legs or give enough space for the legs. So just open through the pelvis by spreading the legs. Keeping the outer edge of the back foot, pressing through the front foot. Now just keep your hip on the wall. Extend your arms and then slide over. You can keep your hands at the wall. Bring your bottom hand. Make sure that the brick is underneath your shoulder and you're able to press down. If you're not able to press down, you can have another block. Take what you need. So there's no hard and fast rule. It depends on your body condition, your, the props that are available for you, and what you really need. So be curious. Take what you need. So if you're coming over like this and it's difficult, you can just take a little bit extra height. If, of course, you've been practicing a while and you want to take the block a little bit lower, you can do that. Keep the legs straight. Keep this knee cap moving into the back of the socket. And now feel that shoulder moving back toward the wall. So as you move the shoulder back toward the wall, start to open through the chest, bringing the shoulder blade into the body toward that bottom shoulder. Just be there, breathe. Notice what you feel. Can you bring more length and more awareness into that foot on the floor? And then stretch the arm up, reach up. Now you can press the fingertips into the wall and move the buttock away from the wall. So you're gripping the muscles of the of the left leg, moving it toward the left pelvis. Turn the chest, look up. And if you can take your hand away from the wall, then do that. And then inhale, come up. Hope everyone is breathing. Okay, so now we'll do this again, but we'll face the wall. So you'll have a different orientation. This is really good to do also if, you're, if you've got a lot going on for yourself and you just need it to focus a little bit more so you can face the wall so you don't have the distractions. Okay, and then you'll come down. Same way, lengthening. Now here's the buttock that was at the wall. So this buttock now is free, it's not fixed. So I have to maintain my awareness here to move that in. And as I do that, I'm moving now this leg away from the wall, so it becomes the opposite action. The other one, you were moving away from the wall, now you're moving <clears throat> the back leg away from the wall. So with the fingertips, be on the fingertips, not the hand. You have much more sensitivity in the fingertips. Press into the fingertips and turn. So with this bottom hand, you're pressing down and bringing that left shoulder blade into the body. As you do that, my left chest comes closer to the wall. My right chest moves away. Keep the firmness in the legs, straightness in the legs, and then reach the, reach the arm up. If you feel that you need to keep your fingers at the wall, just keep your fingers at the wall. Reach up. And then inhale, come up. You can take your block to the other side. Well, I already have my block there. Okay, so just line yourself up. Don't be too close, too far away. Raise up through your right arm, lengthen. Bring your hand over. Take the support of the block. Press the whole palm there to connect the hand with the forearm, with the upper arm, with the shoulder blade and rotate that shoulder back. 
and then bring the fingertips up. Now coming back to that right buttock, move the right buttock toward the wall and move the left thigh back away from the wall. Turn the chest. Pressing into the feet, lift up through the knees, connect the upper thighs into the pelvis, turn. And if you feel you have enough support of your body, the legs, and you want to bring the arm up, bring the arm up. And then come down, bend the knee. Careful when you come out that you don't fall over the block. Walk the feet in and come back to the wall. And just take your feet a little bit further away from the wall. We'll come into Uttanasana. So bending from the hips. When you, come, when you use the wall, you can use the wall to feel the hips lifting up. So you're tucking the pelvis. You're moving from this to this tilt of the pelvis. So the back thighs are lifting. So here in Uttanasana, you can hold on to the buttocks lift the backs of the thighs and here just come into resting uttanasana so you'll take your hands on your elbows and your arms will come down at the same time as your head so your arms don't end up in front of your face but your arms stay here toward the back of the head so again lifting the pelvis lifting the backs of the thighs up keeping the legs firm releasing down Holding onto the elbows, just let the arms come down. Staying there a few breaths. Change the cross on the arms. So you're holding the hand on the elbow and the other hand you're holding the thumb in the crease. And holding onto the elbows and the upper arms, draw yourself down. your breath be relaxed, abdomen spreading, moving towards your back. All right, and then you can bring your fingers to the wall, bend your knees and come up. And so here, we'll use the wall again and we're gonna sit down at the wall. So this is chair pose, this is Utkatasana. So we'll use the wall and slide down. So now you can feel the tailbone moving down. You can feel the back, just like you did in Tadasana, the shoulders, the hips, and reach the arms up. So the body is moving in two different directions. The hips are moving down, tailbone is moving down. The pelvis, the pelvis has tilted, and you're reaching up through the arms. You can take the hands, interlace the fingers, and reach up. So using that, or take the thumbs, and use that to help you lengthen through the whole side trunk. If that's difficult, you can use that strap. Hold the strap. So do whatever you need to do. Get that length. Breathe. And then slide up by pressing your knees and come up. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to the wall and We'll come into Uttita Parishva Kanasana. So, nice wide stride. I've got two blocks, so I'll use the blocks. You can do the same, or you can move your blocks. So instead of jumping the feet, because we have the blocks there, just take your feet wide. Externally rotate the front leg. And have a little bit more distance, because when you bend the knee, you want to be able to drop the hip. So as you drop the hip, you can feel that buttock slide down and you can come more into a 90 degree. If you have too short of distance, like say this, when you bend your knee, we want to keep the knee over the ankle. So if you're bending and bending, the knee comes over the ankle, then you're in a position that's not good for the knee. So take that back leg a bit wider, and still, the same alignment as you teach a Trikonasana. If you can, heel to the arch, if that's too, too short a distance from, for you, you can always move this foot back so you have a little bit more space this way. Okay, so coming down, sliding the buttock down using that wall, feeling the back on the wall. So I want to 
keep the spinal column lifting up as I descend the buttock. And then reach over, take your hand on the block. So position your hand on the block to the, the height that you need. Press the hand down. And now, again, turn the chest. So not only the chest is turning, but you're turning at the abdomen. And then you can feel that shoulder at the wall, this bottom shoulder. I want to move that shoulder away by pressing the shoulder blade into the body. Turn the chest. Reach the arm up and bring the arm over the head. So if it's too much for you to look up, just look forward and lengthen the head. If you can turn and get that turning, turn and look underneath the arm. Keep the back leg lifted, inner thigh lifted, weight on the back of the outer foot. And then inhale, come up and bring your feet parallel. Okay, so I know I'm gonna need this block back a little further, so I'll bring it back. Externally rotating the leg. And then again, with my shoulders at the wall, with my hips at the wall, I'm gonna slide down. So it's not so much moving toward the knee, but the trunk just moving straight down as you bend the knee. Okay, feeling the, the back at the wall as you do that. Adjusting yourself, take the arms wide. And now let your hip drop down a little bit further, but keep this back leg lifted. So as you drop that hip, keep this lifting so inner leg is turning. Inner thigh is moving up. And breathe. And then exhale, coming over the leg, bring the hand onto the block and reach up. Now here, I've got my hip at the wall. So the same as you teach a trikonasana. My elbow and my arm are at the wall, so I can use that to press that hip away. So move the hip away, move the buttocks away, so I'm getting that connection of the femur bone into the hip socket. Be on the outer edge of the foot, keeping that back thigh lifted. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, bring the arm over. So you're getting extension from that bottom foot all the way up through the side trunk. Reaching up, turn the chest. Breathe. Inhale, come up. Bring your feet in. And then walk the feet forward. We'll come back into Uttanasana. All right, so we're using the wall for a couple of different reasons. If you're a beginner, it's great to use the wall. If you're feeling weak, tired, and you still want to have your practice, the wall is great. But also you can use the wall to stay in a pose longer. So if you're staying in a pose longer, then you're going to feel, um, you know, that maybe you need to breathe a little bit more. So just here we'll use Uttanasana to come back to the breath. Again, we'll hold on to the arms, stretch the arms forward, and then lengthen down. Let the back body descend down toward the floor as you hold the arms. So there's a grip on the elbows and the upper arm to reach the arms down. So descend down, coming down with gravity. Makes it a little bit easier. Keep the feet strong, strongly grounded, and the legs lifted. Coming back to the breath. Breath, relax. And then extend your arms out. Look up. Either come up with your arms straight or bring your hands onto your hips and come up. Depending on how your back is, inhale. Lift the arms up. Reach up. Okay. So that was Uttita Parjvakanasana. We'll do that facing the wall as well. And being aware of the same, same thing we were aware of in Uttita Trikonasana. Now this buttock is moving toward the wall. So as this leg bends, there's a rotation of the inner thigh toward the outer thigh and the buttock moving forward. This thigh from the inner thigh to the outer thigh and this leg lifting up. 
Okay, so this leg is moving away from the wall, this buttock is moving toward the wall. So coming first into that 90 degree angle, finding your distance, keeping the kneecap lifted of the back leg and the inner, inner thigh lifted. Just be there, have a few breaths. And you can also take the block on the inside. So having the hand there, closer to the wall, you can work to bring that shoulder blade forward as you revolve that shoulder back. All right, so pressing down, turn the chest, and then move the buttock forward. And as you move the buttock forward, move this thigh back. Be on the fingertips, turning, breathe, now let your hip come down a little bit further without dropping the back leg. And then inhale, come up. Turn the feet so you're facing the wall. Take a few breaths. Externally rotate the other leg now. Inhale, exhale, bend the knee. So again, you're bending the knee, and that thigh is moving toward the, <clears throat> toward the knee, but the shin is moving back, so you're not over, going over the, the ankle. Remember we had the chest, at, we had the back against the wall before, we could feel how our shoulders would be aligned. So you have to look here just to see that the trunk is facing the wall, and now lengthen, bring the hand onto the inside of the knee, inside of the thigh, press down, use the fingertips at the wall, and now bring that buttock forward toward the wall. Bring that thigh back. So you're opening through the front groin of the back leg, keeping that inner back thigh lifted. Use the fingertips on the wall, and reach the arm up and bring the arm over the head. So whichever you feel more comfortable at this point, depending on your practice, you can either keep the fingers at the wall or reach the arm over. Taking a few breaths. Keep that buttock moving toward the wall, back leg, thigh moving away from the wall. And to come up, you can bring your hand back to the wall, Turn the feet, take a few breaths there. Make sure you're not going to run into your blocks. And then come back to Uttanasana, using the wall. So again, hips are lifting, buttocks lifting, feet are pressing down, reach the arms forward, and hold on to the elbows. Take a few breaths, just relax the breath, relax the side trunk, let the arms and the side trunk move closer toward the floor, but keep the legs actively moving back toward the wall. Extend your arms, inhale, come up and step your feet back to Tadasana. Stand in Tadasana, move your hips away from the wall, bring your elbows to the wall, shoulder blades in, and just be aware of your breath. Extend the arms down, fingertips down, bringing the elbows away from the wall, buttock forward. So in the last few poses, we've been moving the buttock away from the wall or toward the wall. Now move the buttock away from the wall, lift the chest. Breathe. Okay, now we'll move on to Ardha Chandrasana, which is half moon pose, and that's a balancing pose. So definitely the wall comes in handy if you do need to have a little stability. So we'll first do facing away from the wall. We're gonna do the same thing, facing away from the wall and facing the wall. All right, so turning that back heel, externally rotating the front leg. Have the block there. So you just move the block so that when you go down, you're going to bend the knee, move the block forward, because when you 
go up onto this leg now. You, this hand will be further forward. So coming up, take the toes, balance on the toes until you can have a straight leg. Press the hand down and lift the back leg. Okay, so I have my elbow at the wall. That helps me to move my shoulder blades away and open my chest. I have my heel at the wall, which then as I press into that, I can then move my buttocks away from the wall. So it helps. It connects from the heel to the buttocks. So just bring your hip back to the wall and extend the arm up. So remember the feeling in the buttock as it was moving forward. Press the buttock forward. You can keep the buttock at the wall, but press it forward, turn the chest, and look up. So you're lengthening through that lifted leg. Standing leg, you're standing tall on that leg, using the muscles around the top of the thigh and the buttock to help you connect into that socket. And then bring the hand down and bring the leg back. So just a note on that. When we're in the standing poses and we're balancing, we've got to use the muscles around the outer thighs. So if we stand like this in a balancing pose, then it puts all the weight on that um, joint. Okay, so when we're in a balancing pose, just show from this side, you're <clears throat> wanting to make sure that that muscle around the hip socket is firm. The buttock, you can feel the whole action of the, of the buttock muscle. Okay, so let's do the other side. Just have that in mind when you do the other side. That standing leg, you want to be firm on that and lifting up. Okay, so come back just a little bit. And then go over. Bend your knee, take your hand on your block, and then hop your back leg in beyond the toes. So it gives you time to walk that block forward. No hurry. Press the hand down. Press down into the foot and lift up through the leg. So as you lift up, it's like a lever. So the, this back leg is helping you to straight the front leg. Straighten the front leg. Just don't straighten the leg and bring this leg up. So use this to help you. Lift the back leg. Again, feel the head at the wall, the shoulders at the wall, the buttock at the wall. Press the bottom hand down into that block, turn the chest, and then reach the arm up. With the fingers at the wall, you can press a little bit more with the fingers and move the, the back away, turn the chest, and look up. That back leg, keep the inner thigh lifted up. Stretch through the ball of the foot. And come down. Come back to Uttanasana. So by this time, I'm sure you're enjoying Uttanasana, just as a little break. So it's good in our practice to know when we need to take a little break, bring your attention back to your breath. Sometimes we do flow, we move from pose to pose. Other times we, we're just <clears throat> making sure that we're aware of what is needed in our body so that we can take the time to give way for the breath and softness in the mind. Okay, so when we're balancing, it takes a lot of mental power, a lot of focus, a lot of concentration. So that is something that you develop as you practice more and more. Pretty soon you won't need the wall and it's not that you really need the wall. Sometimes we just want to stay a little bit longer. For instance, if you were having your cycle for a woman, this is a great one because it's opening through the pelvis. And you can have 
I think I've shown it in some of the other videos, but you can have a chair there to rest your leg on. So here your leg is supported on the chair and you're supporting yourself at the wall. Okay, so there's all sorts of ways to create more support when you need it. All right, so now we're gonna turn around and go toward the wall. So feet wide, externally rotate that front leg. This time we'll take the block on the outer side. All right, so you can be a little closer to the wall. Come into Uttita Trikonasana. And then bend the knee, come forward. Hop in with that back foot, be on the toes, balance yourself. And when you're ready, bring the block underneath your shoulder. And to straighten this front leg, keep that back leg stiff. So it's like, it's a lever. And as you lift that lever, the front knee starts to straighten. So you just don't press the front knee back. You don't overextend your front knee. You grip the muscles of the kneecap, lift them up, and then also the kind of slight grip in the outer thighs at the buttocks. So you keep the legs connected right at the hip socket. Now turn the chest. I have my toes at the wall, so that's helping me to get in the right position, but also helping me have a little bit more staying power stability. Just be there and breathe. And then bring the leg down. Come back up. Usually in that pose, we'd go back through Uttita Trikonasana, but here, because we're using the wall, it's a little tricky, we're close to the wall. Don't worry about that. Just come out of it. Okay, and now coming into Ardha Chandrasana on the other side. Coming forward, bring the block forward. Bring the fingertips up on the wall. So now you can see, when I came into this, my shoulder was coming forward. So ideally, I wanna keep the chest open. I don't wanna start in this position because it takes more work to open the chest. So opening through the chest, chest facing the wall, and then hopping forward with that back foot, lift the back leg. I find the toes on the wall, pressing down into the standing foot, lift up, buttock forward, back thigh back away from the wall. Starting to feel that firmness in your pelvis, that connection with the legs, which brings openness, space for the breath. Breathe, enjoy that breath. And then come down and come back up. This time, take Uttanasana at the wall, hands at the wall, and extend your, pressing your hands, extend your arms, and lengthen. So if your shoulders are tight, you can bring your arms up higher. If you're okay to bring the hands down, bring them in line with the shoulders. Just spread through the fingers, press into the palm, press into the index finger, lengthen through the inner arm. Thighs moving back. Feel the weight on both feet. You can see your feet, so just make sure that they're even. Pressing into the big toe, to the heel, lift the knees, roll the inner thighs back. And then walk back to the wall. Okay. So, those are several standing poses you can do. Now we'll move to one um, pose that will use the wall for the front body. And for this one, you may want to have a blanket. Okay, so you can use a blanket for this. I didn't tell you to get a blanket, but so let me just show you. For some of you, your knees, I'm not sure what kind of mat you're using, if it's too difficult for your knees to to kneel down on this. You're gonna have your two blocks out to the side. All right, so you can do it without the blanket. 
I do all the time. I have a thick mat, but for you, you may want to use something, just a little bit of cushioning. And you'll come to the wall. This is Ustrasana. So you'll bring your thighs to the wall. And again, we're using the wall as a reference point. So we're bringing the buttock forward, bringing the tailbone forward, and feeling the length of the thighs at the wall. So you're opening through the front groin here. You can bring your hands onto your hips and bend the elbow. And from there, you're going to get that lift of the front chest. So this is your armpit area. So the back armpit is moving down, front armpit is lifting. Feet pressing down into that blanket. So this is part of your grounding, part of your base from your calves to the fronts of the ankles to the fronts of the feet, pressing down strongly. You can even press them down so you have some sensation there. And then lifting up, thumbs on the tailbone, elbows bending, getting that curve to the upper back. Now starting to feel the front thighs along the wall. Move the buttock toward the wall so you can feel the front thighs and the front groin curving the back, and then release. Come back onto your heels. And now we're going to use the block. So we'll curve back like we did earlier, and then you can take your hands back and bring your hands onto the blocks. We'll start first by just turning the toes under. This blanket makes it a little difficult because so it's too too far out, so I want to be on my toes here. So I'm turning the toes under. All right, so it gives me a little bit of lift for my heels. You can also use a bolster here. So pressing the buttock forward, lifting, lengthening the abdomen, lifting the chest, shoulder blades moving down, tops of the shoulders moving down, press into the feet, lift up, curving the upper back, and reach back. See, can you find your heels? Maybe you have to move a little bit away from the wall. Take your hands on your heels, and now press the buttock to the wall. Move the thighs to the wall, curving the upper back. And then turn your toes under. Sit back on your heels. Now, if you have any kind of neck issue, We've talked about this before, lengthening the neck. So you're dropping your shoulders, dropping the shoulder blades, and you're creating space here. You have two bones at the back of the head, occipital bones, so they're lengthening. Your tops of your shoulders are descending, okay? If you have any neck issues, just look forward. Don't take your head back. Otherwise, you may be jamming in your neck. Others, you're okay to do that, no problem. All right, so we're, we'll use the blocks now. You can either continue to use the heels, or you can put a bolster here, if you have a bolster. All right, again, bring that firmness to the buttocks, tailbone moving into the body, toward the pubic bone, curving the upper back, and then just reach back and find your blocks. So the fingers are moving back, press into the fingertips, now move the buttock forward, tailbone in, lift the chest. If you're not taking your head back, look straight at the wall. Press the feet, press the ankles. And then coming back down, sit on your heels, interlace your fingers, and reach your arms up. So as you reach your arms up, you're getting that extension. Your lower back is lengthening, extending up. Change the cross on your fingers. Reach up. and then bring the hands down. Okay, so that was Ustrasana, camel pose. So there's many different ways to practice that. Just showing here with the wall, so you can practice that more. Discover on your own, be curious. All right, so now we will go into Sechabanda. Sechabanda will use the blocks, all right? so. You'll have a block at the wall. And depending on your practice, you can either come onto the higher blocks or you can have the lower blocks. 
So I'll just show you from the side. You'll first come into this by coming down on the floor. Have the block there. So I'll take the lower height first. And you're coming a little bit away from the wall. So my knees are still bent. I want to straighten my legs and end up with my feet at the wall. All right, so I'm going to lift up. I'll take the block sideways. This is a nice way to put it if you have any kind of back imbalance, you're having any kind of pain, or you just don't want to go as high as the highest block. And then roll your shoulders under. Before you get too comfortable, just make sure you can bring your feet to the wall and straighten your legs. So here, my knees are a little bit bent, so I'm going to come down, lift up, and move the block maybe 5 or 6 cm further away from the wall. Roll the shoulders under, and then straighten the legs. Okay, so I have my feet at the wall. You can feel the the pressure of the feet against the wall, the balls of the foot, inner heel, outer heel, inner ball of the foot, outer ball of the foot, pressing the big toe into the wall, press the heels into the wall. And here, as you do that, you can feel the legs begin to get active. The kneecaps are lifting. And with gravity, you can just feel that thighs want to descend. So move the thighs down, and that action of the legs engaged that way will help you maintain the lift of the chest. So you've rolled the shoulders under. You're not on the back of the shoulder blade. You've rolled it under, turned the arm out, and just allow the hands to feel the, feel the ground and use the hands like we did at the wall. It gave you support, it gave you a direction. So the hands are giving you a direction to descend down, shoulders are descending, and just feel where you're touching. So you can feel the heels, the feet, and then you can feel the hands, letting the inner arms roll out. And with that descending of the arms, the chest is lifting. Observe the block under your pelvis. So when we did Ustrasana, that's exactly where we moved the tailbone and the buttocks from. We were moving it from that area to the wall. Here now, the block is fixed, so it's helping us to get that same <clears throat> direction of the buttocks moving up and getting a curve to the upper back. So I'll just, you can stay there. For those of you that want to go a little bit higher, you can walk your feet in and you can take that block and turn it up on a higher height. If you had it on the lowest height, maybe you can turn to the second. Or if you had it already on the second height, you can take it to a higher height. Here, I won't adjust the block at the wall. I'll just come a little bit closer because now I'm higher, my arch is higher, and my feet are further away. And then I'll bring my legs to the wall, press the heels, press the ball of the foot, and really lift the chest, sending the legs to reach the shoulders down toward the floor. So this is much stronger. You can stay in the other pose if that was good enough for you. If you've been practicing a little bit longer, or you've opened up here today and you want to go a little bit deeper, take the block a bit higher. And then just be there and breathe. So feel the block across the lower back. So the lower back is spreading. It's wide. All the little muscles along the, the lower back, the pelvic there, pelvic area, and the back pelvis are not gripping, but they're spreading, they're widening. And then this fixed block here in this fixed position in the back body allows the front body to open. So we have lots of 
different organs in the front body, all of our reproductive system, our digestive system, excretory system. So <clears throat> there's so much that's happening in this front body. Just allows you to have some space and then to bring the breath into that area. So the breath is going to bring in blood circulation through and around the organs, the fascia. So it's all getting information right now. So just be there, allow that, that information to travel. and connect with the part of the body that you never see. That part of the body that's so integral to you living each day, connecting with the breath. So to come out, now you're going to bend your knees and you're going to take the block out. So first, bring your feet in closer, especially if you're on the higher block. You're going to lift your pelvis up, take the block away, and then bring your hips onto the floor and keep your feet on the floor. Just move your trunk away from your hips because we've been in an arch. If you just come down like that, you'll, you'll compress the lower back. So keep the hips grounded like they were on the block and lengthen the trunk. And then you can stretch that leg down to the wall, your left leg, bend your right knee. So with the foot at the wall, you can continue to keep that extension and that connection from the leg to the pelvis, to the trunk, right up through the body. And then holding the knee, interlace the fingers and bring the thigh toward the chest. You can feel probably more weight on this right side, so Bring weight to that left pelvis as well, like you were feeling that on the block. Keep the left thigh moving down toward the floor. And remain aware of where you're touching, touching the foot into the wall. And then release. And stretch that leg down now. You can move your block to the side. So be at the wall, take the other leg in, interlace the fingers, and bring that thigh down. Keep the heel and the ball of the foot pressing into the wall. You can even move your toes away. So as you do that, you feel the kneecap gripping and the whole action coming through the top leg. Just allow this knee and thigh to come down. Keep the toes relaxed. So the toes at the wall are working, but the upper leg, the toes are relaxed. And just feel that nice release in your lower back, spreading. And then release. And you'll roll over onto your right side and press yourself up. And now we're going to do one more pose at the wall. We're going to bring, bring a block, sit on the block, and you can bring your legs to the wall and come into Dandasana. Have your feet spread wide. So in Dandasana, the thighs are descending toward the floor. The lower back is lifting, lengthening, and you're using the feet to stay connected. From here, you can start to bring your hands forward toward the wall. All right, reach your arms up, lengthen through the side trunk, and if you can, bring your head between your arms. So it's a little slippery on this block. If you have a bolster, you can use that. Just make sure the block is there for you so that you can feel the sitting bones, you can spread, widen the buttocks, and you can come forward a little bit. So lengthen the lower back. 
You can even take your hands down on your ankles. You have a block there. For those of you that can bring your head down further, do that. If you can't, just keep lengthening. If you have a bolster, you could bring the bolster across the legs as well. Release the head down. Soften your breath. And just be aware of the abdomen. Sometimes the abdomen is bunching up like a ball right in the center. Use your breath, use your exhalation, and just allow the abdomen to spread. So it's not in just the center, but it's spreading out to the sides, supporting the lower back. Let your head relax down. And then inhale, come up. And you'll come down onto the floor. And we'll take Shavasana with your feet on the floor, on the feet at the wall. So here, we're going to keep the feet at the wall just so that we can keep this distance. So it's not too, sometimes we just lay down and spread our legs. So here, you can feel the lower back. You can feel the feet at the wall. And you have a little bit of containment. So just carrying on with the theme of the legs and using the wall. See, see how your Shavasana is with the feet at the wall. OK, you can bring your blocks onto your thighs so your thighs descend. <clears throat> Adjust your shoulders and bring your arms out. And I just notice the difference that, that you feel Sometimes, if you have like a restless leg or you have some sensations in your legs or your feet, this is a good practice to do because it helps to restrain those nerve endings. So if sometimes you feel that often pregnant women will have restless leg or sometimes people with back injuries, the back problems, you might feel it in the legs. So this might be very comfortable and comforting for you. So just try it out. Always trying new things in your practice to see the effect on your body and the effect on your mind. Now just let your breath go. Beginning to feel the breath. Feeling the breath in the abdomen. Just allowing the legs to release completely. In that containment. Think about horses. Oftentimes, horses, they'll enclose them so that they can calm down. They can, if they're overexcited, it brings a sort of neutrality and quietness to the nervous system and to the mind. Just observe yourself. Let your breath relax. and let go into that space. You can stay in Shavasana as long as you'd like. When you come up, just take your blocks to the side. Bend your knees. Roll onto your right side. Let your 
arm and your shoulders support your head. Take a few breaths there. And then come up and sit back in a seated position. Come back to the breath. Namaste. Thanks for joining me. I hope you learned something. And if you have any questions or comments that you want to address to me, just write me a, a little note and I'll be sure to get back to you. Um, if you want to go a little bit further and have other things to practice along this line and where we incorporate the wall and a few other props, just go to my videos, the beginner videos, and you'll be able to find lots to practice. Okay? All right. Well. Take care, and I'll see you next time.